Thank you, brother. Amen. While we remain standing, let's pray. Almighty God, author of life and giver of all good spiritual gifts, we are indeed grateful now for this most marvelous, outstanding a time of fellowship in your presence. Marks a great highlight in our lives, Lord. A time that we'll never forget, no matter how long we should stay. And we pray, God, that on this closing night, we are noticing the scripture on the closing day of the feast, Jesus stood among them and cried out, If any man thirst, let him come to me. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that that'll repeat again tonight, that we can hear the voice of our Lord calling us. Yes. And calling us into the service for Him, closer walks. We feel that we've heard His voice already in the opening of these seals, speaking that it's the last day and the time is at hand. Grant these blessings that we ask for, Father. In Jesus Christ's name and for his glory, amen. Be seated. I'd like to add this that of all the services I've ever had in my life, I believe this week has been the most glorious time of all my life and services. No matter what I have, I've seen great miracles performed, of course, before in healing services, but this is beyond that. It's been one of the great times, highlights of my life is to be here and seeing the little tabernacle take on this different look. Not only that, but the inside take on a different look. And now, I uh, was asking Billy, he was so long about coming and getting me, he said there had been a, another group baptized, which runs over a hundred this week, of uh, people being baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we are, are thankful, and God bless you. And now, if you do not have a church home, we invite you here to come and fellowship with us. Just remember that... The church is open. We are no denomination. And uh, I hope and trust that it will never be a denomination. Just a fellowship where men and women and boys and girls meet around the table of God and fellowship around the Word. And we have all things in common. Uh, Now, we have a wonderful pastor. (laughs) A real man of God. And I'm so thankful for that. And if you'll remember a vision a year ago, that food was stored up in the plates. And that's exactly right. And we are we have the place now adequate for the Sunday school classes for all the ages. And we are just very grateful for this opportunity. Someone said sometime if they would just had Sunday school classes where they could send their children, you, they got them now. So now, so you just come right on and be with us if you don't have a church home. Of course, if you have a good church where you're going to and preaches the gospel, so forth, well, that's, that's just a, another group of us, you see, somewhere else. But if you have no home and you're, uh, I understand that several had has moved in from other parts of the country to make this their church home. And we certainly welcome you here to the word of the Lord. And I remember, I guess, when I left, I told you that that the services, as far as I was concerned, would be here at the tabernacle. I don't know yet what all the Lord has for me in future. I trust that to his hand. Not some superstition or anything. I just wait day by day for him to lead me into the place to where I could be a better service for him. And when he's finished with me, and I trust that he'll receive me home in peace. And now, I am very grateful for the cooperation of the tabernacle people. As Billy was telling me this week, 
And I think every home that's represented here around this tabernacle has a, somebody with them. <clears throat> they opened up your homes and places and taken in people that wouldn't have had any place to go to. Now, that's real Christian acts. Amen. And some homes have just stuck everybody in every little corner that they could to get people a place to stay because this has been a very hard time on account of this, some kind of a, a fair they've been going on about the sports world, some kind of basketball or something, and, and reservations have been made, plus a great group from, I think, represented here in this little church about around 28 or 30 states Represented right here in a church besides two foreign nations. So, and this little revival, so that takes up quite a bit of room itself. Noah, I was asking today with some people, I said I understood there wasn't too many Jeffersonville people around in the meeting. Someone spoke up and said we can't get in. <laughs> that, was, that was the reason. Some of the police and so forth wanted to come to the meeting, but said, I've been talking around, said, but they come up and they couldn't get in. That is already uh, filled up before even time that they could get it in. So they had their time maybe later on and they didn't come. So now Amen. the people are coming from other places. So we're very grateful. Now, I don't know. The next thing would follow this would be the seven trumpets and uh, other message. But in the seals, practically everything is included. The church ages come down and we place them first, which is most uh, which is most important, but the o of that time. Now, the opening of the seal shows where the church goes and how it ends up. And now, I think the Heavenly Father has been certainly uh, gracious to us uh, for letting us see what we have. Now, I say this, looking over old notes that I preached on many years ago, I was just coming in and saying what I thought was right and going on. It was a way off of the line. And I, all four of them seals, I had it in about 20 minutes sermon. All of it. The four horse riders of Revelations, I put them all together and said, one horse went in white. I said, perhaps that's the, the, the early age. And the next horse went in famine and, and that, almost like that. A mile when the word really was opened up, it was 100 miles away from it. So it behooves us to watch and wait. And maybe it had to be this time to do it. Amen. There may be many things that's been said that might be disagreeable with other people. But I believe when the great wind-up time comes and we meet our Lord, you'll find out that it was right. So it, it, it really is. Uh, people who are from out of town, from around the different places, coming from different states and nations, how I appreciate your sincerity to travel all the distance and to take your vacations and some of them... Even without places to stay, I, I know, because I've been able to help some of them get places to stay without even money to eat on or anything else. And so, uh, and even to come anyhow, expecting something to happen and take care of it. And with such a great a faith in that, that no matter if they have to go without food or even a place to stay, they want to come here, those that, that things happen anyhow. That's really gallant, you know. And everybody has just been so 100%. I met my brother-in-law back there, which was a, uh, had the brick laying of the church and so forth. And I was telling him about how I appreciated his job. I'm not a, a brick mason or know nothing about it, but I do know what a square corner is and where it's fixed up. Kind of right. And he said, I tell you, he said, there never was such a time hard as you ever seen such harmony amongst man when they all work together. Brother Woods, Brother Roberson, and everybody just placing their places, everything. And the brother who, who put the acoustic, uh, the uh, I mean the uh, public addressing outfit and everything in the church, they said everything just worked right. When they need something, there'd be the man standing there to do it. Amen. So it's God is in a, all the whole program. We are very thankful for this. Many great donators in the church to help do it, such as our brother. Dow and Sister Dow sitting here and many others that's donated heavy to this cause. And I think right at the time they don't like a little bit at all being paid for. So we're very grateful for that. Remember, it's your church for you are a servant of Christ and that's what it's built here for. An open door to make servants and for servants who are already servants of Christ to come in and enjoy themselves 
around the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we want you to know that everybody's welcome. And now, when you hear me sometimes under the time of anointing, kind of rake down the uh, curtain on the organization, I, I don't mean that against your pastor or against any brother or sister in church. Because, after all, God has people in every organization there is. But he don't accept the organization. He accepts the individual in the organization. And the, it doesn't take an organization. Therefore, when people get so bound around organization, then they can't see nothing else but just what that church says. You see? And that makes disfellowshipping with others. And it's a system that God is not pleased with. And it's a worldly affair, never ordained of God. So I don't mean any individual, Catholic, Jewish, whatever it might be, or, or Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, any organization, no organizations and, and non-denominations and all. God has his children sitting out in there. So, and many times I believe they're out there for a purpose, to give light, pulling out those predestinated ones from all around everywhere. And, and on that great day, We'll see then the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will be called to the, to the great meeting time in the air. And we'll all go up to meeting. Now, I'm looking for that hour. Now, if so much could be said, and tonight on the final closing night, as usually everybody's in a healing service, I find under anticipations for great things to be done, in the healing service, which makes them attention nervous. And then I find the same thing tonight, that everybody's under expectation of seeing how, and each night it's been that way, for the opening of those seals. Now, I want to make this real clear. Every time, every time that these seals has come to the place, everything that I ever believed on them, and has read of other people has been contrary to what come to me in the room. And my mind at this time, the reason I had that healing service this morning, because my human mind is becoming so um, away from my own way of thinking. I have tried to stay in a, in a room with the shades pulled down, a light on. This is the eighth day. And not even got in my car to... To go anywhere, I had to go with some brothers down to banks to sign some notes and things on money and stuff that had been borrowed for this church. But I, uh, but I come right straight back and went right to study. And the strange thing, there hasn't been one person said anything. Or usually they're knocking and pulling and around. There hasn't been one thing. It's been very phenomenal. Hallelujah. Where I've been eating at at Brother Woods's. Usually that place is packed around with cars. And they had eight or ten different people who's going to come stay with them during this time. And not a one of them come. <laughs> then this morning, I'll never forget this morning, the grace of our Savior to his tired, weary servant. When I answered a poor person's question, in the best of my mind, thinking that I'd done right, and all of a sudden as if I'd, I'd taken something away from a child. I was so condemned and didn't know what it was. And I thought maybe being I was pressing to get to that healing service, maybe somebody so desperately sick that it had to be prayed for right then. And I asked the audience, in a few minutes, it was revealed. And somebody said, won't you read your, read your text over or something? And that time I picked up a little piece of paper and read it again, see what it said, and looked down on the book, and it was altogether different, the question I was answering. See? May I just pass this to you? When the supernatural comes in, that's the mind of Christ. You become so far away from your own thinking. So, in your own mind, I, this, you, I don't, don't let me try to explain that because I can't. See? I couldn't do it. There's nobody could do it. How could that man, that's the Elijah, stand up there on the mountain or the presence of God and pull down fire from heaven? And then rain right behind the fire. And then close the heavens that didn't rain for three years and six months and go right back and call the rain on that same day. And under that anointing, how and tuck 400 priests out and killed them. And then run to the wilderness screaming for his life 
on a thread of one woman. See? Jezebel, she swore that she'd take his life. When Ahab and all of us there to see the presence of God and the great miracle done. See? His, the spirit had left him. In his natural way of thinking, he didn't know how to think. See? He couldn't think for himself. And remember the angel put him to sleep and rested him. Raised him up, gave him some cakes and put him back to sleep. And rested him and raised him up and gave him some cakes again. And we don't know what happened to the man for 40 days. Then he was pulled back in a cave somewhere. God called him. Don't try to explain that a supernatural. You can't do it. Okay? Only things to do is just go right ahead. And I try to make myself clear as I can. But from henceforth, I'll, I think I'll never try it again. I just absolutely believe or not. And I'm, you'll see a little later why. Now, I've tried to be honest. God knows that. And that question this morning, I was trying to answer it just as honestly as I know how. I just read the first part of the verse, and it was a, wouldn't have been right. But the Holy Spirit, understanding it, I, my mind, see, look the last two or three days, what's been happening. The, I, I called 700, 7,700. This morning was trying, and it's picked up with the people. And that showed that she was watching. Now, another one where I was trying to say the dove, and I called it the lamb. But I caught that right away. And then here, one I didn't catch on that, the Holy Spirit turned right back around and called me to it. That's a double confirmation that these things are right. Amen. Amen. God's watching over to see that it's right. Amen. That's right. He wants, to, he wants you to know that it's the truth. And he's the one that's sending it. Because it sure wasn't, it was just as much to me a learning as it has been to you. And so we are, I'm very grateful for the, the, the knowledge, the know now of the Lord, what hour we're living in. The living right in the end time before the going away of the church. Now, yes, we've been talking, so let's just ask these blessings on the word again. Our Heavenly Father, here comes that great night, a great hour, that when a great thing has happened. It's been all around the people. And Father, I pray that tonight that will be made known beyond a shadow of doubt to the people's hearts and minds that they know that God is still on the throne and that he still loves his people. And it's the hour, hour that the world has longed to see is now approaching. For it cries out for redemption. We can see the elements ready to bring it back. We can see the elements ready to bring the church into the presence of Christ. We can see the, the bride taking on the farm, putting the wedding garment on, making ready. We can see the lights are flickering. We know that we're at the end. Now, Heavenly Father, as this go forward now to preach or to teach on this great mighty event that taken place in glory some 2,000 years ago and was given to the great beloved apostle John. Tonight we're to speak upon it. Let the Holy Spirit come forward now in his mighty power of revelation. That he might reveal to us that thing which he wants us to know. As he has in the last few nights, we commit ourselves to you with the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as you want to turn maybe in your Bibles, and this is just a short verse, one verse of Scripture, but it's uh, the last verse. It's found, last seal rather, uh, last night we were speaking on the sixth seal. First seal being the Antichrist introduced, his time went through and we've seen how he went out, how the beast that was introduced on God's power that went forth with the Antichrist power to combat it, I don't believe it could be a question in anybody's mind about it. And we find out as immediately after that, that church age, that beast, 
went, got through, we find out we changed the whole picture there. No more beasts come out. See? But it was introducing, coming forward over into the tribulation period after the church that went out. How perfectly it fit right in with the church ages. I don't see one eye, only one thing that didn't fit perfectly. Even to the ages and everything and the times. Think of it. That shows it had to be God. The human mind could not fathom that. And now we find out that also we, the Lord let us take the scripture, the holy scripture, what Jesus said would take place. And how would we ever found that? And here it comes over and reveals and brings it. Just exactly his sermon there answering that brings out exactly to the point six of the seals. But he omitted the seven. Amen. Then when the seals were open, God noticed here he omitted revealing even any symbol of the seven. It's a perfect secret with God. Notice, now we're going to read in the Bible in the, the seventh seal. That's found in Revelations, the eighth chapter. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And that's all we have. Now, we're going to notice and try to not hold too long because many of you will be on the road yet tonight uh, going home. And I thought again having the healing service this morning, which would let you go in the morning. Wouldn't have to wait over. And now we, and I too, I've got the journey on to, to Tucson, Arizona, where I live. And it's my home now. And then I, I want to be back here, the Lord willing, around uh, the family wants to come back for a few days in June. And now maybe I'll get to meet you all down here at a meeting in that time, my next appointed service is Albuquerque, New Mexico. I think it's the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, I'll be there Thursday and Good Friday. So I was to have the whole thing, and I had other appointments where I couldn't make it to that time. So I'll have Thursday night and Friday night at Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then, uh, and then the, the next known close is potentially... We don't know for sure. That's to be with my good friends, uh, the, the group of the Midnight Cry Amen. at um, up at uh, uh, Southern Pines, North Carolina. And they're on the phone in there now, which they've sent telegrams, message, everything, and coming this close for another group at Little Rock of the Jesus Name people. I uh, had the meetings with over the Cow Palace last summer. They're having their convention at Little Rock, Arkansas. And they've been, since last year, wanting at least one night, or wants the whole of it, but they would even be ready for one night. And so I told them, not knowing just what to do, I said, they could advertise it potentially, then they'll let it know a little later. Has he just called? Mm-hmm. All right. What's that? Hot Springs, is it? I was mistaken. Uh, 24th of... May 24th to 28th of June. Now, it's announced potentially. That is, if it's the will of the Lord. See, uh, here's the reason I like to do those things. You'll learn a little later now. See, when I go to a place, I like to set my feet down there knowing that God said go there. Then if the enemy rises up anywhere, I say, I'm here in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just move back. (laughs) And you're, you're sure your ground, see. When he sends you anywhere, he'll take care of you, see. But if you go presumingly, then I don't know. <laughs> he might not be there. So I, I want to be sure as I can be. I've talked many ones that he didn't tell me to take. But I, I like to be as sure as possible. Lord bless you all now. Now, now we notice this being just one uh, verse here. We'd like to do something just a little a little bit before here. You notice we skipped the seventh chapter. The sixth chapter ends up the sixth, uh, the sixth seal. But between the sixth seal and the seventh seal, there's something takes place. See? And how 
How lovely that's placed just at its right place between 6th and 7th chapter. Now, you notice in the 7th chapter, we notice between the 6th and 7th, there's an interval. An interval between the 6th and 7th chapter of the book of Revelations, and it's between the 6th and 7th seal that this interval is given. Now, we want to notice this. It's very important that we notice this little time. Now, remember, after the 4th chapter of Revelations, the church is gone. After the the uh, four harsh riders has went out, church is gone. See? Everything that happened to the church happened up to the fourth chapter of the book of Revelations. Everything that happened in the Antichrist move went up to the fourth chapter and the fourth seal of Revelations, both for Antichrist and Christ, ended up and Antichrist comes to his doom and with his army and Christ comes with his army. It's an old battle that started way back beyond time. And then they were Satan and his angels was kicked out. And then they come to the earth and the battle set in again because Eve broke down the barrier from where she was uh, isolated behind the word of God. And from that very hour, Satan won the battle over God's word because one of his subjects, the weaker, let down the bars. And that's exactly how he's won the battle every time has been because one of his subjects let down the bar from the word. And it was done in this last church age through an organizational system which the real, genuine, holy church of the living God with the lion rider would not accept the word and turn the church from the word to dogma. Uh, how many knows that it's dogma that the Roman Catholic Church is built on? Amen. Do they admit it? Absolutely. Sure. Certainly they admit it. That's not what a Catholic church wouldn't hurt your feelings a bit. Because they know that. They just added a new one here not long ago. That Mary was resurrected. You remember it here a few years ago, about 10 years. How many remembers that? Papers, I'm sure. Everything. The new dogma. See, it's all dogma, not word. Man. A priest on an interview recently, he said, Mr. Branham, he said, God is in his church. I said, God is in his word. Amen. He said, we're not supposed to argue. I said, I'm not arguing. I'm just making statements. <laughs> God's in His Word. That's right. Anybody will take anything away from it or add anything to it. Said the Word. He said, well, God gave, Christ gave His church power and told them whatever they bound on earth, be bound in heaven. I said, that is exactly truth. He said, we have on the this principle that we have power to lose sin. And I said, if you'll do it the way that it was given to the church and the way they did it, I'll accept it. If you do, there's water here to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Amen. Not for somebody telling you your sins are remitted. That's exactly. Watch Peter with the keys on the day of Pentecost. Remember, he has the keys that they're talking about. And the, the man said, Man and brethren, what can we do to be saved? Peter said, Repent, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. What for? For the remission of sins. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children. Them as far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. That's right. So that settles it forever. It's all over. That did it. Now, but to see Antichrist come in, as we pictured it and showed it, what a revelation. Amen. Amen. Ah, my. And to think all these years, we've seen it moving up, and here it, it's absolutely directly thus saith the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, and we notice this interval now between the 6th and the 7th chapter. Now, the 7th chapter of Revelation here is a, a reveals a happening. It's not in here just for nothing. It's not put in between this for nothing. See? 
It is here for a purpose. And it's a revelation that reveals something. Notice how mysterious and how mathematically it fits right into the Scripture. Exactly. You believe in God's mathematics? Yeah. If you don't, you're sure lost. In the, you'll sure get lost in the Word. If you start putting a four or six or, or something besides this, the mathematical words running in order, you'll sure have in your scene a cow picking grass on top of a tree somewhere. You'll you certainly run out because God does not, His whole Word does run completely in, in, in mathematics. Yes, sir. Perfect, the most perfect. There's no other literature written like it, like it. So perfect in math- mathematics. Now, the the eighth chapter only reveals the scene of uh, the scene of the seventh seal, where nothing else is revealed. Now, nothing is not revealed in the seventh seal. Now, it has nothing to do with the seventh chapter of, of Revelation. It's a uh, revealing of the seventh seal is perfectly mute. And if I only had time, I'll try a few places to show you all the way back from Genesis, the seventh chapter, the seventh seal is, is spoke of. Amen. From the very beginning in Genesis, the seventh, these seals moved right up. Couldn't you remember this morning bringing these things up? And watch tonight, bring them up. And you find out when it gets to that seventh seal, she cuts off. Yes. Jesus Christ is speaking himself, told of the end time. And when he got, told all se- six seals, when he got the seventh, he stopped. There it is. See, it's a great thing. Now, now, uh, we're going to speak here now on this seventh chapter, just a minute, to, to kind of bridge it in between sixth and seventh seal, because that's the only material that we have to go on right now. Is the sixth between the sixth and seventh seal is the calling out of Israel. Now, I have many fine Jehovah Witness friends sitting here. It's all or have been. Maybe some of them still Jehovah Witness, but they've always applied. Mister Russell did this hundred and forty-four thousand to being the supernatural bride of Christ. See, they it's not. It has nothing to do in the church age at all. They are absolutely Israel. Now we're going to read in a few minutes. Now this interview between the six, the seals, is a calling and sealing of the hundred and forty-four thousand Jews called in the tribulation period after the church is gone. See, it has nothing to do with the church age at all. Oh, it's called in perfectly harmony with the scripture. Daniel's last three and a half weeks uh, allotted to Daniel's people. See? Not the Gentiles, to Daniel's people, and Daniel was a Jew. Now, notice Israel, uh, Israel believes only her prophets. And after they are vindicated and nowhere through the church age since in the early apostolic church has the Protestant church ever had a prophet. Amen. Tell me who it was. In short term. Never. They had in the early apostolic age one called Actipus, which was a vindicated prophet. But in when the Gentiles came in, into inheritance of God, and Paul turned to the Gentiles after Peter, as we read last night, had received from the Lord that he's taken a, a people from the Gentiles for his name, his bride, then they never has been on the pages of history a Gentile prophet. Right, you just go back to history and find out. Why? Exactly, it'd be contrary to the word. Exactly. When the first went forth was a line. That was prophets. Word. The next went forth was a work sacrifice. The next come forth was the cunningness of a man. But we are promised in the last day that to return to the church again for the benefit 
of straightening up all that has been misundone, mis left undone, for it's predicted here that the seventh angel's message would finish the mysteries of God. Amen. Now we've went through it all. We see that it's perfectly in harmony with the scripture. That's the reason. Now, could you imagine when this person comes on the scene? When he does, remember, it'll be so humble and things, the, the churches will miss it a long ways. And could you imagine the churches still under the tradition of the reformers would ever receive a prophet from God who would be firmly against their teachings and organizations now, there's only one person could fulfill that. Only one spirit's ever been on the earth. And I know it would either be, it would have to be Elijah in his time. And it was predicted that it would be, which is nothing but the spirit of Christ. Amen. When Christ come, he was a fullness. He was a prophet. He was a, the God of the prophets. Amen. See? See? Christ, look how they hated him. But he come exactly the way the word said he would come. Amen. But being that he was a prophet, they blasphemed themselves away from the kingdom of God by calling the spirit of God, which was discerning and so forth, an unclean spirit. Said he was a, is a fortune teller of devil. That is a fortune teller is a devil. See? The devil spirit. Certainly. Do you know that? Yeah. Absolutely. Fortune telling is an impersonation of a prophet, which is absolutely blasphemy before God. Now, notice. Called in perfect harmony with the scriptures of Daniel's last three and a half years. Notice, Israel's believer, believers only are told in the Old Testament to believe their prophets after the prophet has been vindicated. Amen. If there be one among you who is spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, my, thy God, will make myself known to him and speak to him in visions through dreams, to interpret dreams. Somebody have a dream, the prophet will be able to interpret it. And if, uh, if he has a vision, he speaks it, I'll make myself known to him through visions and dreams. Make myself known. And if what he says comes to pass, then hear that prophet, because I'm with him. If it doesn't, then don't fear him at all. That's right, get away, just let it alone. See? Now that now Israel always is going to believe that. And don't you see, because why? Now, I want you to catch this lesson good tonight now. Why? Because that's an order from God to them. Amen. I don't care how many tracts that the Gentiles get over there and spread out. I don't care how much you go through Israel with a Bible under your arm proving this, that, or the other. They'll never receive nothing but a prophet. That's exactly right. For a prophet is the only one who could take the divine word and put it in his place and be a vindicated prophet. They'll believe it. Right. I was talking to a Jew up here at Benton Harbor when that John Ryan being blind all of his life nearly received his sight. They take me over there to that house of David and this... Uh, a uh, rabbi come out with his long beard. He said, but what authority did you give John Ryan his sight? I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. He said, far be it from God having a son. See? And uh, he said, uh, you people can't cut God in three pieces and give him to a Jew. Make three gods out of him. You're a bunch of heathens. I said, I don't cut him in three pieces. Amen. Amen. I said, rabbi. Would it be a strange thing for you to believe one of your prophets told something wrong? He said, our prophets don't tell nothing wrong. I said, who was Isaiah 9 and 6 speaking of? He said, the Messiah. I said, then Messiah will be a man prophet. Is that right? He said, yes, sir. That's right. I said, show me where Jesus missed it. He said, I said, what relation will Messiah prophet be to God. He said he will be God. And I said, that's right. Now you got no head. So help me. That Jew standing there and the tears rolling off his cheeks said, I'll hear you sometime later. I said, Rabbi, you believe that? And he said, look. He said, God is able these stones to rise children to Abraham. I know it is in the New Testament. I said, right, Rabbi. Now what about it? 
He said, if I preach that, I'd be down there. You know where the place sets on the hill there? Down there in the street begging my bread. I said, I would rather be down there begging my bread. Amen. The Jew still got his hands on money, you know. Yeah. They, I'd written his name and gold on the... I said, I'd rather be down there eating salty crackers and drinking branch water and know that I was in the harmony with God Amen. and truth than I would be here with my name on that building and gold letters like that and know that I was away from God. Amen. I know that. Amen. He wouldn't listen to me no more. So he went in. That's it. You can't cut God no two or three pieces called Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and make three gods and hand it to a Jew. It's very commanded. As thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm the Lord thy God. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, Hear you, O Israel. I'm the Lord your God. One God. Amen. Not three. You'll never give that to him. No, no prophet will ever talk about three gods. Amen. <laughs> Lord, you'll never hear that. No, sir. That's pagan and heathen is where it come from. Yes, sir. <laughs> Notice, but these prophets will come. Not only that, the, the prophets now is Revelations 11. We've read some of it. I want you to read as you study on the tapes and so forth. They are absolutely vindicated prophets by the sign of prophets. Then Israel's going to hear that. Now, do you, my Jehovah Witness friends, understand now that these 144,000 has nothing to do with the bride. There's not one bit of scripture to support that. No, sir. They are not. They are Jews. The elect is called out during the time of the last three and a half years of Daniel's 70 weeks. Now, that's, uh, I keep quoting this, so we're not so much to you all here, but see, people, these tapes go everywhere, you see. You understand that. You hear me quoting back. It's for that purpose. Notice, now I see how they had to blind. Do you see how they had Jesus or God had to blind the Jews to keep them from recognizing Jesus? If they knew, if they only knew that that was seeing the sign that he did, if they'd been in the right stage like they was back under the law, what God commanded them about a prophet, and they had seen Jesus did that, they'd said, this is the Messiah. Why was it those in that age who had their names written on the land's book of life, his apostles and so forth, they seen it and recognized it. Amen. Why didn't the rest of them? Amen. They, they were blinded. Amen. They couldn't see it. They don't see it yet. Amen. And they won't see it Amen. until she's born as a nation at one time. Amen. That, the word can't fail. Remember, the word can't fail. Amen. Don't care how many sensations you have and what all takes place. Yet that word cannot fail. Amen. It's going to be exactly the way God said it was. See, now we realize that these things must happen. And that's the reason they didn't recognize Jesus when he perfectly identified himself to be the prophet. Even the little, little old Samaritan woman standing out there at the well. He had never been in Samaria. He just went up and said he had need to go that way. And he went up there and there's that little woman and heard her state. She was in better shape to receive the gospel than those religious priests and things of that day. She done it. Yeah. Now, see, but in the face of all of their rejection, yet one of their most noble men admitted that they knew he was a teacher sent from God. I was talking to a, one of the finest doctors there is in the southern states in his office not long ago. A very fine specialist in law. A real gallant man. And I said to him, I said, Doctor, I want to ask you a question. He said, all right. I said, I noticed your medical sign, the staff. You got a, a serpent wrapped around a pole. What does that stand for? He said, I don't know. And I said, it stands for this. It was a symbol of divine healing. Where Moses lifted up the brass serpent in the wilderness. Amen. See, which was only a symbol, only a symbol of the true Christ. Now, today, medicine is a symbol of divine healing. And though many of them don't believe it, real good doctors do believe it. But some of them don't believe it, but they're very 
emblem that they hold up testifies to the power of Almighty God, whether they want to believe it or not. That's right. There's a brass serpent hanging on a pole on a medical emblem. Now, notice these Jews. Now, the scales of blindness uh, was on these people's eyes. They, they couldn't help it. It was there. And God put it there. And uh, they are on there until the age that they're promised uh, this coming prophets. You can send missionaries. You can do whatever you want to. Israel will never be converted until these prophets come on the scene. And that will be after the rapture of the Gentile church. Amen. No more than the ox age could receive a lion's call. For God has said in his word that an ox spirit went out. And in the reformer's age, a man went out. See? You just, that's the only thing you, they can receive. That's, and in there and out, they are blinded. That's just all there is to it. Now, notice, but the age is coming when the Gentiles will be done with. There's a tree. And the roots was Jewish. And it was cut off. And the Gentile was grafted in. The wild olive tree. And it's bringing forth its fruit. Now, when that Gentile bride is cut off, that bride tree I talked about, and is taken up in the presence of God, God will wipe off them unbelieving Gentiles over here to the side, the sleeping virgin, and graft again. Amen. He promised to do it. Amen. And until that time, you just have to know where, you, if you know where you're going, well, all right. If you don't know why, you're stumbling in darkness. Now, that's when the Jews will be converted during that age. Now, like the church age, under the power of the anointed promise, they will receive Christ. But now, not while the Gentiles are in. Now we can see what kind of a message that these two prophets of Revelation's 11th chapter will preach. Now you clearly can see exactly what they're going to do. For the remnant are the 144,000 predestinated receives the seal of God. Let's just read. Now listen real close now. I want you to read with me. You can't go, go to refer back to this just in a little bit. Seventh chapter. Now this is between the sixth and seventh seal. After these things, after these things, these seals, the sixth seal was let loose and that's a tribulation period. Everybody understand that now? Six seals let loose, the tribulations on. After this, what? After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that it should not blow upon the earth or on the sea or on any tree. Four angels. And I saw another angel uh, ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the sea, the earth, the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, until we have sealed the servants, not the bride, servants, not the sons, servants. Amen. Israel has always been God's servants. Amen. The church is sons. See, by birth. Israel is his servant. Watch every place it's always. Abraham was his servant. We're not servants. We're children. Sons and daughters. Yeah. Of, the, of our God in their forehead. Now watch. Our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them that were sealed. I want you to listen close to the reading. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. He perfectly named them. Now, if they had to be a British Israel uh, discerner sitting here, listen how this takes the wind out of it. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Call the tribe. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000. Watch your, watch your tribes now. 
And of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. A tribe of Nephilim were sealed 12,000. The tribe of uh, Manassas, 12,000. And the tribe of Simeon sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of, of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000. Asher, I guess you pronounce that, 12,000. The tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. And the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. Of all the, of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Now there's 12 tribes, 12,000 out of a tribe. 12 times 12 is what? 144,000. Now watch. Them were all of the tribes of Israel. Now what? After this, now here comes another group. Now the bride's gone. We know that. But watch this group come up. After this, I beheld in law a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which set us upon a throne and to the Lamb. And all the nations stood around about the throne and about the elder and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessings, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders, now he's before the elders here. We've seen him all through the seals. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these? Now John, being a Jew, recognized his own people. He seen him in tribal form. Is that right? He recognized and called each one of the tribes. But now when he sees these, that he's kind of puzzled. And the elder knows it, so he says, uh, Who are these? What, who, which are arrayed in white uh, robes. And whence cometh they? John answering out. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. John didn't know them. He all kindred tongues and nation. And he said unto me, These are, he said unto me, uh, these are they which come out of great tribulation. In other words, the great tribulation. And have washed their robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And they He set up on a throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, sun light on them, or any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. Now, you open the, get to the seal. Did you notice? They were, first we start now, Israel, and then we see the purged church, not the bride, the purged church by tribulation. Coming up here, great number of real sincere hearts that come up out of the, of the great tribulation. Not the church. It's gone on the ride. There's the church. Now, we find out over a little later, Jesus said that the throne would set and how the, they stand in the judgment. H1. Now, we find now that these people were sealed with the seal of the living God. Is that right? These Jews. What is the seal of the living God? Now, uh, not calling any, hurt to any feelings. I'm just saying, see. Do you know that reading after many of scholars who write on this claim that this uh, group here, blood washed, are actually the bride? Did you know that many scholars also claim that the 144,000 is a bride? What a, is something got to fit out your wrong, uh, in your right, cause you something wrong now. Notice, our Adventist brethren say that the seal of God is keeping the Sabbath day. You know that? But I want one speck of scripture on it to show that Sabbath, uh, keeping the Sabbath day is the seal of God. See, it's just, uh, uh somebody draw that idea. But if you read Ephesians 
It says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day you of your redemption. Amen. Yes. When the mediator work is done and you are come, Christ comes to redeem his own. You're sealed not until the next revival. When you're once sealed with the Holy Ghost, it's a finished work that God has received you and there's no getting away from it. Hallelujah. You say, well, I had it and I went away. No, you didn't have it. God said it goes on to the day of redemption. Uh, you just argue with him. <laughs> but maybe tell the day of your redemption. Notice. As there were, as they were a remnant according to election. These Jews are now a remnant according to election in the days of Elijah's first ministry to the Jews were seven thousand believers were kept away by the hand of God. Now there is in this remnant time coming to their time to be 144,000 according to the election that the message at that time to believe the message be 144,000. Now, you say, oh, now, just a minute, brother. I don't know about this election stuff. Well, I never read it there. All right, let's see if it's right now. Let's turn back to Matthew and um, get down here and find out if we can't find a little something on this somewhere, I believe now, that I'm right. I haven't got to roll down here, but just come to my mind. Let's take at the ending, the 30th verse where we went last night, the ending of the sixth seal on the 30th verse. Now, let's read that and see now where we get to the 31st verse. See? They'll see the Son of Man coming in glory. Now, the 31st verse, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four Winds from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. Amen. The elected will come out. What is it? And the tribulation period. Now God will call his elected, and that is the Jews. Amen. During that time, the elected. The Bible speaks of it. Paul speaks of it. According to the election. There will be 144,000 according to the election that will believe the message out of literally millions that will be there. There were millions in Palestine at the days of the prophecy of Elijah and 7,000 was saved out of millions. Now, according to the election, where millions of Jews are gathering into the homeland has become a nation, there will be millions in there, but only 144,000 elected ones will be taken. They will hear the message. Same thing it is in the Gentile church. There is a bride, and she is elected, and he will be called according to the election. Notice, this all types the church perfectly. The elected believers, others do not believe. You can just tell it. You tell a man a truth. And let it be proven by the word and then vindicated. So I don't believe it. Amen. You can just don't, don't fool with it no more. Amen. Jesus said not to. He said, this is like casting pearls before swine. Right. Right. said, just leave them alone. They'll turn tramping on their feet to make fun of you. Just walk away and leave them if a blind leads a blind. I went to a man not long ago. He come to me, brother. He'd been arguing all around everywhere against divine healing. And he come up and he said... I don't believe your divine healing. I said, mine, I guess, wouldn't be any good because ain't got any. And he, I said, but God's is perfect. He said, there is no such a thing. I said, you're too late to say that, buddy. <laughs> uh, you don't you don't wait too long for that. You might have argued a few years ago, but there's another age on now. <laughs> Millions to testify. I said, you're, you're too late now to say that. He said, uh, he said, oh, I don't believe it. I don't care what you do. I said, certainly not. You can. He said, smite me blind. 
said, if you're, you got the Holy Ghost like Paul, said, smite me blind. I said, how can I do it when you're already blind? I said, your father has blinded you <laughs> to the truth. I said, you, you're already blind. And he said, uh, I wouldn't believe, I don't care what you could do, how much evidence you can prove or anything like that. I still don't believe. I said, certainly, it wasn't for unbelievers. It was only for believers. What was it? See, you know right then, the election's off. Just don't fool with it at all. Jesus did the same thing. He said, let them alone. The blind leads the blind. Won't they all fall in the ditch? Oh, when he come to a little prostitute, he struck fire. What was it? There's an elected seed laying there. See? You've seen it right now. When it come to Peter, there was elected seed laying there. See? And they saw it. And all the Father has given half, past tense. Given me. They'll come. They'll come to me. Oh, my. I love that. Yes, sir. Notice. The believers does believe it. The unbelievers can't believe it. So now, if anybody wants to argue about serpent seed and things, and you try to show them, they won't listen to it. Just walk away. Amen. Amen. See, God don't argue. Neither does His children. Amen. Notice, God's one hundred and forty-four thousand elected Jews don't bow to the beast, this denominational ism, or statues, or anything. Amen. Though their nation is in a covenant with it at the time. Israel is in a covenant, but here's 144,000 that's not going to do it. Amen. That's the elected. Same thing it is right here in the Gentile church now. It's an elected group. You can't pull them in that kind of stuff. Amen. They won't believe it. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Light once struck them, that settles it right then. Amen. They see the see it happen, then see it vindicated and proved and like that. And they look down here in the Bible and see that word just going to go. Oh, these two might as well just quit fooling with them because they believe it. That's all. Amen. That's all. Though they can't explain it, but they know they got it. <laughs> uh, I said a lot of things I can't explain, but I know it's real anyhow. <laughs> All right. This time was between the sixth and seventh seal that he calls these people. Spoken of by Jesus in Matthew, the 24th chapter, and the 31st verse that we just read. See, trumpet sharing uh, are the two witnesses uh, the, on the trumpet sounds is a trumpet of the two witnesses of the age of grace for the Jews. One trumpet sound, you notice, one trumpet sound, he said, it sound the trumpet. Now notice over here. 31st. And he shall send forth his angels. Not one. See? It's two of them. With a great sound of a Trumpet. What is it? When God gets ready to speak, there's a sound of a trumpet. That's always his voice. It's calling to battle. See? God speaks. These angels will come forth with the sounding of the trumpet. And you notice, at the last angel's message, the trumpet sounds. The first angel's message, a trumpet sound. Second angel's, a trumpet sounded when he sent it out. Notice, but when the seals were announced, they were all in one great divine thing to call out a group of people. There was one trumpet sound, Amen. and seven seals were broke. Notice, gather his elected Jews from the four parts of the heavens. He uh, mentioned uh, six seals, as we have seen, but not the seventh seal. He's never said nothing in here about the seventh seal, no word. See right away, the 32nd verse turns to uh, parables of the time of the calling of the elected Jews. Now watch here. See? And he'll send the angels with a trumpet. And he'll gather the elect from the four corners of heaven. Now he starts, see, don't say anything about the seventh seal here. See? He spoke of the sixth seal, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But notice, now learn a parable. Of the fig tree, when its branches is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer's nigh. So likewise, ye when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. That last that question they asked him, and what will be the sign of the end of the world? When you see 
these Jews. When you see these other things taking place, you know what take place. Now when you see these Jews talking to the Jews. Now watch. What company is he talking to? Gentiles? Jews. Jews. See? Now he said, you behave of all nations for my name and so forth. Now when he said, you see these Jews begin to pluck forth their buds over yonder. When that Israel begins to turn back, getting into her country, when she gets there, the church is ready to rapture. There's only three and a half years left until the end of the old world and she goes out into chaos and in comes the millennium Amen. to the new, new earth. He said, even at the door. Now, 1,000 years on earth is only one day with God and three and a half years, what would it go to? So many seconds in God's time. That's when he said, it's at the door. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not be consumed, done away with this people, until all these things are what? What will be done away? They try to kill a Jew off the earth all the time. They'll never be able to do it. But notice, the very generation of Jews that seen the return back into Palestine that generation would see these things happen. Amen. Amen. And just the last two years, she was fully become a nation with her own money and whatever. That's it. Now, where are we at, friends? Amen. The seals and everything opening up. We're getting this in between here. There it is. See where we're sitting? I hope you get it. I Amen. haven't got no education. I know what I'm talking about, but maybe I can't explain it to make sense to you. But I hope that God takes the words that's mixed up and divides them out right. Amen. See, and lets you know what it is because we're at the door. Right, right, right. We're here at the time. Now, notice. See right away now. He turns uh, to these Jews. And at the, the end time, he says, what's going to take place? We know even that now, we know we're well aware that the tribes are scattered. Uh, they have been for 2,500 years. They were prophesied to be scattered to the four winds. Did you know that? We know that. Of course, we won't have to go back and get picked that because i got something here real important I want you to see before you get too tired and I'll get wore out. Notice, we know even every tribe that is tribal uh, chronology or whatever you want to call it or geology or the tribal positions are not no more together. They're scattered everywhere. The Jews are gathered into Jerusalem. It's not, they don't even know the tribes. They haven't got any more tribal banners or anything. All they know they know they're Jews. They were prophesied to be that way the world over. Now, their books has been destroyed. They don't know. They say, what tribe are you from? I don't know. What tribe? I don't know. One from Benjamin, one from this, and one from that. They don't know where they're from. Their books have been destroyed through the wars. And for 2,500 years, the only thing they know, they're Jews. Amen. That's all. So they know they're back in their homeland. They Yet, notice, though they don't know their tribes, but God does. Amen. 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 I just love that. Amen. You know, he even said, there's every hair on your head's number. Mm. Notice, he loses nothing. I'll raise it up against the last day. Though they have lost their, their, their tribal banners, and their who, which one is, and whether they're this or that, they don't know whether they're from Benjamin or whether they're from Reuben or, or Asher or where they're from, but anyhow, God calls them here. Now notice, in Revelations Seven. We read this. Twelve thousand of each tribe of the elected out of all of it. There's twelve thousand out of each tribe that's elected, and they're set right here in order. Amen. Oh my. What are they? They're in tribal order. Yet they're not now. But they will be. Amen. They're in tribal order. What will be in tribal order? Not the regular Jew, no, but the ones that's the elected, the 144,000 will be set in tribal order. Amen. Oh, 
my, how I'd like to show you it. We won't go into it, but that's exactly what the church has to be. Amen. Right in order. Now, I want you to watch real close and read with me for a minute. Now, here's something that maybe you never noticed in the, uh, the tribal calling. I told you a while ago to read Revelation 7. Read with me and watch those tribes. In Revelation 7, Dan and Ephraim is missing and not numbered with them. Did you notice that? Joseph and Levi were substituted in their place. Did you notice that? Dan and Ephraim is not there. No, sir. But Joseph and Levi were substituted in the place of, of, of Dan and Ephraim. Why? The, the ever-remembering God remembers every promise of His Word. Amen. Oh, I'd like to preach on that. See, God don't forget nothing. Though it looks like, like he told Moses, Israel had been down there 400 years, but it had to go up that time. He told Abraham that his seed would be a, a sojourning in a strange land for 400 years, then he'd bring him out with a mighty hand. But then he said to Moses, I have remembered my promise. Amen. And I've come down to make good what I've said. God doesn't forget. He doesn't forget his curses, neither does he forget his blessings. But every promise that he made, he stays with it. Amen. Here's why they were missing. Now, if you watch. Now, read. I want you to read with me now. Go over to Deuteronomy, the 20, uh, 29th verse. There, a 29th chapter. Rather. There is a reason for these tribes not being there. Everything has got a reason for it. Deuteronomy, we want to take the, the uh, 29th chapter. Uh, of Deuteronomy. Now, the Lord so help us that we can understand now. Now we want to start in Deuteronomy, the 29th chapter, at the 16th verse. Now listen. Moses speaking. For you know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt and how we came through the nations which we passed by. And ye have seen the abominations and their idols, wood, stone, silver, gold, which were among them. Everyone carry a little something other, little statues, Saint Cecilia, you know, something like that. Lest therefore, listen, lest there should be among you a man, woman, or a family, or a tribe. Whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he that he bless himself in his heart and say, I have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my own heart. See? People say, well, he blesses himself. You know, make a little cross or something like you do now. See? Yeah. Same thing. See? And um, you see, it's a heathen trait. See? So, so he, he blesses himself in his own heart, in his own imagination, in his own mind to add drunkenness to thirst just drink, that yeah, don't make any difference as long as you go to church, it's all right. Man, the Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord, his jealousy, shall smoke against that man. And of all the curses that are written in this book, don't take one word from it or add one to it, see, shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall block his blot. Out his name from under the heaven. Amen. That's why he's here on earth. See? Under the heaven. 
And the Lord shall separate unto him evil out of all the tribes of Israel according to all the curse of the covenant that's written in this book of the law. Therefore, if any man will serve an idol or keep an idol on him or bless himself in his own imagination of his mind and serve idols, God said, man, woman, family, or tribe, his name will be completely blotted out from amongst the people. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Amen. How true idolatry did the same thing in the church years ago and does today. And well, I notice, watch, how the Antichrist tried to make an anti-move. How many knows that the devil types and patterns after, after God's saints? What is, what is sin is right thing perverted. What is a lie is a truth misrepresented. What is adultery is a right act, legal act, done wrong. See? Now, in trying to do this blot out of him, did you notice in the church age, the same beast serves as images of dead people and so forth, tried to blot out the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and give titles as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Same thing. With that curse behind it like that. Dan and Ephraim did just that under a hypocrite of a king in Israel. Amen. An imposter. Jeroboam. Now notice in 1 Kings, the um, 12th chapter. I know where this to me, it, it, it lays a background on what we can depend on. What we see. 1 Kings. I'm going to go to the 12th chapter, uh, 25th uh, to the 30th verse. Then Jeroboam, Shuim, and the Mount of Ephraim, and dwelt there and went out into and built Pentel. And now Jeroboam said unto, in, in his heart, see the imagine of his heart, now shall the kingdom turn to the house of David. He was getting scared, you see, because the people might go out. If this people go up to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people be turned again uh, to the Lord, even to Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go unto Rehoboam, um, Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two caves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold your gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And he set up the one in Bethel and the other but he in Dan. And this thing become a sin, for the people went to worship before uh, the one even to Dan. See, Ephraim at Bethel and Dan, and they set up idols, and these went out to worship this, and here we are plumb down into the millennium age almost, and God still remembers that sin. Amen. They're not even counted in there. Hey, Lord. Just as sure as he remembers every good promise, he remembers every one evil too. Just remember when, that's the reason I believe, friends, I've always tried to stay with that word, no matter how strange it seems. Amen. See, now, they wouldn't think about that there, then. They didn't think about it then. They thought, well, they got by with it. All right. But here they are over here in this millennium age setting in when their names and tribes is blotted out from Amen. Them yes. Because they serve idolatry that God cursed. Didn't he say he hated the Nicolaitans and that Jezebel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, away from it. Didn't he say he'd kill Jezebel's daughters with the killing of death, which is eternal separation from his presence? Amen. Don't trust in it at all. Get away from it. So God remembers. Notice. But did you notice there? It's to be blotted out. Why? Under heaven, there was no immediate sacrifice that could give him the Holy Spirit to let him see these things. But he did it anyhow in his own selfish mind. But Ezekiel, in his vision, in the millennium, 
He sees them again in perfect order. Ezekiel, if you want to read it, just put it down and you read it to save time. Ezekiel 48, 1 to 7, also read 23 to 29. Ezekiel seen every tribe just exactly in order. All right. And also in Revelations 14, John seen them again in tribal order. That's right, every tribe to his place. What happened? Remember, he said, under the heavens, that his name would be blotted out of the tribal affair. As long as he was under the heavens, there would be no more. And this 144,000 is down here in the tribal part yet. Right. But you see, they've been blinded. They had only the sacrifice of bulls and goats. See? Now, notice, he blotted them out under the heaven, but the Gentile, in the days of the Holy Spirit, Against that, your name was taken completely off the book of life and could never have forgiveness in this world or the world to come. Is that right? That's where we stand. Israel under goats, sheep. They, they did have a place as long as it was on earth here. The tribes is missing. They could never be included. Now, all when he called them, one of the other 144,000, they were missing. That's right. They're not even numbered in there. And Joseph and Levi is put in the place of Dan and Ephraim. Now, you can look at that right there. It is before you. See? And here's God's promise way back there, hundreds and hundreds of years before that. Now, what happened? They were purged during the time of the awful tribulation period. Now, if God's going to purge that's, that virgin that was a good woman, but she just failed to get oil in her lamp, and he's going to purge her, through persecution in there, he puts them tribes right in there for the same thing. Amen. And purges them during the time of the tribulation period because it is a, a purging, it's judgment. But you see, the, after, and look here, here comes up the 144,000 after the purging of Israel, and here comes up also the sleeping virgin comes up purged and has white robes on. Amen. See? How perfect, how beautiful that is. Just like Jacob in a time of trouble. See? They, Jacob in a time of trouble, he had done wrong. But he went through the purging time because he had wronged his brother Esau. See? He deceived to get his birthright. But he went through a purging before he could have his name changed from Jacob to Israel. Which is a type of uh, the order of God uh, type today. Now, we'll turn now to the eighth verse of the, uh, or the first verse, I mean, of the eighth chapter. Revelation 1, uh, 8, 1. I know you're tired. And I just try to listen just for a few minutes now. And God of heaven helps my prayer. We must remember that this seventh seal is the end of time of all things. Right. The things written in the seventh seal book sealed up of the plan of redemption from before the foundation of the world at every bit ends. It is the end, it is the end of the struggling world, it is the end of struggling nature. It's the end of everything. In there, it's the end of the trumpets. It's the end of the vials. It's the end of the earth. It's, a, it's even the end of time. Amen. Time runs out. The Bible said so. Matthew, the seventh chapter, I mean, uh, Revelation, the seventh cha fifth chapter, and one, the seventh verse. Time runs out. The angel said, time will be no more. Well, that in the days of this great thing to happen, everything runs out. In this time, the end of the, uh, the, at the end of this seventh seal, notice, it's the end of the church age. It's the, the end of the seventh seal. It's the end of the trumpets. It's the end of the vials. And even in the ushering in of the millennium. That's on the seventh seal. It's just like firing a rocket into the air. And that rocket explodes here and it goes up. Then it explodes again. It puts out five stars. One of those stars explodes and blows out five stars from it. And then one of them stars explodes, blows out five stars from it. See? It fades on out. That's what the seventh seal. And this ends the time for the world. 
It needs a time for this. It needs a time for that. It needs a time for this. It needs a time. Everything just ended up on that seventh seal. Now, how is he going to do it? That's what we don't know, isn't it? We don't know. It's even uh, time for all these things. And the ushering in of the millennium. Notice, the breaking of this seal was so great that heaven was hushed by it in silence for the space of a half hour. Now, is it great? What is it? It was hushed. Heavens. It was a thing moved for a half hour. Now, a half hour might not be long if you're having a good time. But in the suspense of between death and life, it seemed like a millennium. It was so great. Jesus never mentioned it. None of the rest of them. John couldn't even write of it. No. He was forbidden to write here. See, it's just, a, it just, he didn't write, but it's, it's silence. And the four and twenty elders that stood before God there harping with their harps, they quit playing their harps. The angels hushed their singing. In heaven, think the holy cherubims and seraphims that Isaiah saw in the temple with six sets or three sets of wings, three two over his face and two over his feet, and flying. And he day and night there before God, singing, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty." And even when they walked in, come into the temple, the post of the temple moved with their their presence. And these holy seraphims hushed up. Angels quit singing. (laughs) Flying in the presence of God singing, holy, holy, holy. They shut up. No angels singing. No praises. no, No altar service. No nothing. There was silence. Hush. Deadly silence in heaven for a half hour. All the host of heaven was silent for this half hour when this seven seal mystery in the book of redemption was broke open. Think of it. But it's broke. Amen. The lamb breaks it. You know what? They were awed by it, I believe. They didn't know. There it was. They just stopped. Why? What is it? Now, None of us know. But I'm, I'm going to tell you my, my revelation of it. And uh, I am not prone to be a fanatic. If I am, I'm ignorant of it. I am, I'm not given away to uh, such as uh, Lyrius. Uh, carry-ons and imaginary things. I've said some things might have been kind of strange to some people, but when God comes around behind it and vindicates it and says it's the truth, then that's God's word. It may seem strange that way. And now, as certain as I stand in the platform tonight, I had the revelation that revealed it's in a threefold manner that I will speak to you by God's help of a fold of it. And then you, let's go to there first. Here's the revelation to begin what I want to tell you what it is. What happens is that those seven thunders that he heard thunder and was forbidden to write that's what the mystery is laying behind those seven consecutive thunders rolling out. Now, why? Let us prove it. Why? It is the secret that no one knows about. John was forbidding to write about it. Even, even write a symbol about it. Why? This is why. There was uh, no active in he- activity in heaven. It might give away the secret. Do you see it now? Amen. If it's so great, it must be included because it's got to happen. But when the seven thunders, I noticed, when the seven angels come forth to sound their trumpets, there was one thunder. 
When Israel was gathered, there was a trumpet. When time shall be no more, the last trumpet. One thunder. But here is seven straight thunders right in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That perfect number. Seven thunders in a row. Uttered not naked, just, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, straight. Then, heavens couldn't write that. Heavens can't know about it. Nothing else because there's nothing to go on. It's relaxing time. It was so great till it's kept secret from the angels. Now, why? If Satan should get a hold of it, he might do great damage. There's one thing he don't know. Now, he can interpret anything he wants to and impersonate any kind of a gift. I hope you're learning. Amen. Amen. But he can't know this. It's not even written in the Word. Amen. Amen. It's a total secret. The angels, everything shut up. Amen. If they made one move, it might give something away. So they just shut up. Quit harping. Everything stopped. Uh, seven, God's perfect number. Seven, just right down the road. Seven thunders uttered straight together. Like you're spelling out something. Notice, at that time, John started writing. He said, don't write it. Jesus never spoke of it. John couldn't write it. Angels know nothing about it. Amen. What is it? It's the thing that Jesus said even the angels of heaven didn't know nothing about it, see. He didn't know it himself. Amen. He said only God would know it. Amen. But he told us when we begin to see these signs coming up. Now you're getting somewhere? Amen. All right. Amen. Notice. We can see these signs coming up. See? If Satan can get a hold of it, if you want something to happen, now you'll have to take my word for this. If I'm planning on doing something, I know better than to tell anybody about it. Not that that person will tell it, but Satan will hear it. See? He can't get in my heart there as long as God's got it closed up with the Holy Spirit. So that's between me and God. Amen. See? He don't know nothing about it until you speak it. Then he hears it. And I've tried. I tell people I'll do a certain, certain thing. And watch the devil cut off every wheel he can to get there. See? To beat me to it. But if I get the revelation from God and just don't say nothing about it, then it's different. Remember, Satan will try to impersonate. He'll try to impersonate everything that the church will do. He's tried to do it. We noticed it through the Antichrist. Yeah, yeah. But this is one thing he cannot impersonate. Amen. Amen. There'll be no mimics to this. Amen. Because <laughs> he don't know it. There's no way for him to know it. Amen. It's a third pull. He just knows nothing about it. Amen. He doesn't understand it. Amen. But there's a secret lays beneath that. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Glory. Yes. Glory. Thank you, Lord. I can never think the same the rest of my life. When I've seen, now I don't know what, I know the next step there, but I don't know what, how to interpret that. It won't be long. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've got row down here when it happened. If you can see here. Stop. <laughs> Go no further than this right here. I'm not prone to be a fanatic. I'm just telling the truth. But you remember the little shoe that I always tried to explain how the, the soul laid next to so-and-so in the inner conscience and all that kind of stuff, which it only made a big bunch of impersonations start after it. How do you have to take up the hand and hold the people and have vibration? Everybody had a vibration in their hand. But you remember when he took me up there and said, this is that third pull and no one will know it. Amen. Amen. You remember that? Amen. Visions never fail. Amen. They're perfectly the truth. Now, notice. 
Remember the vision of the consolation? Charlie and I, here you are. Something going on, I told you this week, that you, it's been all around you, but I wonder if you've noticed it. Remember the consolation of the vision of the angels when I left here to go to Arizona? You remember what time is it, sirs? You remember that? Yes. Notice, there was only one great burst of thunder and seven angels appeared. Is that right? One burst of thunder, seven angels appeared. And I saw the Lamb when he had opened the first seal, and I heard as it was a voice of a thunder. And one of the four beasts said, come and see. Notice, one thunder. Seven messages that's been sealed up and cannot be revealed until the last day Amen. at this age. See what I mean? Amen. Now, have you noticed a mysterious part yes. of this week? Amen. That's what it is. Amen. That's what it's been. Amen. It's been not a human being, a man. It has been the angels of the law. Amen. Amen. Notice, there's witnesses of three sitting in here that a week ago, a little over a week ago, I was up way back into the mountains nearly to Mexico with two brethren that's sitting here picking cockle bird or sand birds off of my trouser leg. And a blast went off that almost looked like shut the mountains down. Now that's right. I never told my brethren. But they noticed the difference. And he said to me, now be ready, go east. Here's the interpretation of that vision. See? Now to let you know, Brother Sopin has not got the game that he went after. We was trying to get it for him. And he said, now tonight for a sign to you, he isn't going to do it. You must consecrate yourself at this time or the visitation of these angels. And I felt beside myself, you remember. And I was in the west. The angels was coming east. And as they come by, I was picked up with them. Amen. You remember that? Amen. Coming east. And Brother Fred in here tonight is a witness. And Brother Norman, as we went down, I almost persuaded that man to stay and get his game. Is that right, Brother Simon? Yeah, yeah there, it stands right there. I persuade, but yet he said he won't do it. I never said nothing. Went on. Something set him on the side of the tent the day that you remember, Brother Simon. Now, as soon as uh, some things was being told, that I put you and Brother Norman, where's Brother Norman? About there. Put them under oath that they wouldn't mention what was taking place. Is that right? Did I turn around and walk away from that tent like that? Is that right? Because this is what it was. Amen. <laughs> exactly what it was. And knowing that I couldn't say it till it happened to see if the people would understand it. And did you notice? That one angel, I said in there, was a strange angel. And you look more to me than any of the rest of them. Remember that? They were in a consolation, three on the side and one on top. And the one right next to me here, counting from the left to the right, would have been the seventh angel. He was brighter, meant more to me than the rest of them. You remember I said he had his chest out like that and was flying eastward. Do you remember like that? I said, it picked me up, lifted me up. Amen. You remember that? Amen. Here it is. Amen. The one with the seventh seal, the thing that I've wanted all my life. Amen. 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 That mother seals meant a lot to me, of course. But oh, you don't know what this has meant. Amen. Amen. For one time in life, I prayed, I cried out to God. I, 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 at that Phoenix meeting, any of the people there with me know, I laid in the mountains one morning. I got up and went up in Sabinia Canyon. It's great, rugged, high mountains. And I went up in there, and there's a little foot trail 
As you lead off going up in the Lemon Mountain, which is a 30-mile walk, and you're about 30 foot of snow up there. So up in the mountain real early before day, going up through this little foot trail, rolling rocks along, I felt led to turn this way. And I turned and went up into some great jagged rocks, oh my, hundreds of feet high. And I knelt down between those rocks. I laid down this Bible. I laid down this book, this little tablet. I said, Lord God, what does this vision mean? I, I'm, I'm, I said, Lord, it, does it mean my dying? You remember I told you I thought it might mean my death? Because something exploded till it just shook me to pieces. You remember? How many knows have heard it? Well, sure. Amen. All of it. Amen. And I thought it could mean my death. And then in the room, I said, was, what, what, what was it, Lord? What, what does it mean? Does it mean I'm going to die if it is? All right, I won't tell my family. Just let me go on. See if my work's finished. I said, now, what was it? But he sent a witness back. You remember me tell you that it wasn't that. It was a furtherment of my word. Yes. Amen. Oh. Amen. You get it? Yes. See? Yes. And setting up in Sabinia Canyon, the Heavenly Father knows this. Just as true as you see that come to pass, those angels come right down and have vindicated every message to be Amen. the same. Amen. Then you know whether it comes from God or not. Amen. Amen. It was foretold you by a vision. Amen. I couldn't tell you until the service is over because I was forbidden to. In Sabinia Canyon, sitting up there that morning, I had my hands up and my, the wind had blown my over. Black hat. <laughs> when I was standing there with my hands up praying, I said, Lord God, what does this mean? I can't understand it, Lord. What am I to do? If it's my going home time, let me go up here where they never find me. I don't want nobody to be mourning around if I'm going. I, I want just the family think I just took a walk and they won't find me. Hide me away somewhere. If I'm going to go away, well, let me go. Maybe Joseph will find my Bible in here someday and let him use it. If I'm going away, let me go, Lord. And I had my hands out and all of a sudden something hit my hand. Now, I don't know. I can't say, did I go to sleep? I don't know. Did I go into a trance? I don't know. Was it a vision? I can't tell you. Only thing I can say is what I, just the same thing like them angels was. And it struck my hand and I looked and it was a sword. Yes. And it had pearl handles. Amen. Real pretty. And had a guard over it with gold. And the blade looked like something like a chrome. Like silver on it. Real shiny. And it was so feather edge sharp. Oh my. And I thought isn't that the prettiest thing that's fit in my hand? I thought that's awful pretty. But I said hey I'm always afraid of them things. A sword. And I thought what would I do with that? And just then a voice shook down to that that rocked the rocks. Said it's the sword of the king. Amen. And then I come out of it. The sword of the king. Now, if it said the sword of a king, but it said the sword of the king, and there's only one the king, and that's God. And he has one sword. That's his word. What a live That's so healthy. God stand over his holy desk here with this holy word laying here. It's the word. Amen. 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 Oh, what a day we're living in. What a great thing. See the mystery and secret. The third sent in there. When this left me, something has come to me and said, don't fear. Now, I didn't hear no voice. Like on the inside of me spoke. I have to just tell you the truth. Just exactly what happened. Something hit and said, don't fear. This is that third pull. Third pull, do you remember? He yes. said, you've had so many impersonators on this, what you tried to explain. I said, don't even try this. You remember? How many remembers that vision? Why, it's all over. It's been taped and everywhere. That's been about six years ago. Seven years ago. And seven years ago. He said, don't try to explain that. He said, this is the third pull, but I'll meet you in there. <laughs> that right? He said, don't try. I was standing with a, a little baby shoe when he told me, Sam, make your first pull. And when you do, the fish will run after the lure. So said, then watch your second pull. said, because it'll only be small fish. 
He said, then the third pole will get it. And all them ministers got around me and said, Brother Bram, we know you can do it. Hallelujah, Brother Bram. That's where I always get tied up with a bunch of preachers. Yeah, yeah. Right. I love people. They want you to explain everything, this, that. And I said, well, uh, 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 I said, I, I don't know. I said, I understand fishing. Now, I said, now, first thing you do, here's what's done. You see all the fish around. You got to jerk the lure. Well, that's exactly the tactics of fishing. So I said, jerk the lure. Now, I see when I jerk the lure the first time, now the fish takes out after it. But they were little ones. That's just like they were catching. So then I, I said, Daniel, you're set. And I jerked it out on the bank. I had a fish, but it looked like a skin over the lure. It's just, it was so little. And then I stand there and something said, I told you not to do that. And I started crying. All the line was tangled around me like this. And I had, I was standing there crying with my head down like that. I said, God, oh, I, forgive me. I, I, I'm a stupid person, Lord. Don't. Forgive me. And I, I had this line, and that what I had in my hand was a little baby shoe about that long. And I had a, that string was about as big around as my finger, about a half inch line. And the eyelet in this shoe was just about the size of a, a little than a, a one-sixteenth, probably, of an inch of the eyelet. And I was trying to lace this little shoe up with this great big inch cord. And a voice comes and said, you can't teach Pentecostal babies supernatural things. Amen. said, now let him alone. Amen. And just then he picked me up. He took me up and set me way up high to where a meeting was going to look like a tent or a cathedral of some sort. Now I look, and there's a little box, like a little place over in the sign. And I seen that light was talking to somebody above me, that light that you see there on the picture. It whirled away from me like that and went over to that tent and said, I'll meet you there. And said, this will be the third pull, and you won't tell it to nobody. And in Sabinia, Canada, he said, this is the third pull. And the three great things that goes with it. And one unfolded today, or yesterday. The other one unfolded today. And there's one thing that I cannot interpret because it's in an unknown language. But I stand right there. And looked right straight at it. And this is the third pole coming up. Amen. And the Holy Spirit of God. Oh my. That's the reason all heaven was silent. Amen. Now I, I better stop right here. See. I just, I just feel checked not to say no more about it. See. So just remember. The seventh seal. The reason it was not open. The reason it did not reveal it. No one should know about it. And I want you to know before I even note any word about that, that vision come years ago. Do you remember that? Yes. And here it is, just as this other has slides right straight into the word exactly where it was. And God knows my heart. I never one time thought of such a thing as that. Amen. And here it was. And it's later than we think. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. oh my. This shows it's from God. For see, it fits exactly in the promises of God. From the end of the, the message. You notice. Notice now. For the end of time message. This seal. After all, he, he's revealed all the six seals. But don't say anything about the seven. And the end time seal, when it starts, will be absolutely a Total secret, according to the Bible. Before knowing that, and remember, Revelations 10, 1, 7, 1 to 7, chapter 10, 1 to 7, at the end of the seventh angel's message, all the mysteries of God will be known. We're at the end time, the opening of the seventh seal. Now, how did I know the other day, last Sunday, a week ago today, when I was preaching on be humble, be humble. Remember, God deals in little things. I didn't realize what it really was talking about, and now I see it. Amen. It is in such a humble way. Yes. You'd think it's something like that would be revealed to the Vatican or but it comes just like John the Baptist. Amen. It comes Amen. like the birth of our Lord. 
in a stable. Glory to God. Lord, help me the hours of hell. Glory. We're here to be the hours of hell. Oh, my. Now do you see it, the truth of God's vision, the seven angel bringing me from the west. They were coming from the west, coming back east, bringing here for this message tonight. Oh, my. Now, the voice of that great thunder and the mission that was brought here has been revealed that it, and proven that it was of God. You think now. Huh? I knew not these seals. And they've been revealed this week. Did anybody think of that? Of those seven angels? Being this being the message. That was coming forth. Them angels bring me back here for that. Remember. The seventh messenger. Was. The seven messengers. Was. The noted one to me. The seventh angel. It seemed more to me. Than any. I see that we're standing like this. I we just want you to notice. And I was standing here and I was watching those other, see, one first bunch of little birds, feathers all beat down, you remember them? And they all flew eastward. And the second bunch were brighter, bigger birds, looked like doves, pointed wings. They flew eastward. First pull, second pull. Amen. Then the next was angels. Amen. And it's, I was standing right there, and this explosion left, and I was looking this way towards the west, and they come and just picked me up in there, and I went plumb out of my knowing. And the one of them coming was the one that looks so strange to me, was the one on my beat the left where I entered the constellation at, but counting from the left to the right, it would have been the seventh angel okay, coming across. Now, remember the seven messengers. Do you remember the pyramid of white rock of Junior Jackson's dream that I interpreted to you? Notice the night that I left, and I, there were six dreams came. And every one of them directly to the same thing. Then the vision started and sent me west. It's ju Junior. He was watching. Notice. Look how perfect. I'm, I'm hoping and trusting that you people realize that I'm trying to put this grace on Jesus Christ, who is the author of all of it. And the only reason you never heard me talk like this before in your life. But this hour is approaching. Amen. We believe. Amen. We believe the See, Amen. Notice. Not to make it sure to you. So it can be driven down. I'm fixing to leave you again. I don't know where I'll go. I must preach the gospel other places. But now that you might say, I've heard all that kind of fanaticism. I don't know what I can't judge any other man. I only have to answer to God for what I for, uh, for myself. But has there ever been one time I ever told you anything in the name of the Lord that wasn't right in all these years? Nobody else can say so because I always told it just the way he told it. Now let me just show you that this is exactly true and confirm it. Now remember, if there be a spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, will speak to him in Amen. visions and make known to him by dreams, interpret in dreams. Is that Joseph, you can interpret dreams and speak and, and see visions. Is that true? Amen. Now notice this. That now, when this taken place, Junior was standing in a field that had a, had a big pyramid to it like that. And there was something wrote on the rocks. And I was revealing that to the people. Is that right, Junior? Amen. About a year before it happened. And notice the next thing now. I took some kind of a bar and cut it off. And on the inside was white rock that had nothing wrote on it. And at that time, I started to the west. And I told them all, I said, don't go out west, stay here, and look on this till I return. Went west for the blast, returned back to the east with the Holy Spirit interpreted this unwritten word. Amen. 
Now, if that isn't perfect, a God Almighty, I don't want you to know what is. What am I trying to say this for, friend? It's to show you we're at the end time. Now, if them others is perfectly on the dot with the word, so is this perfectly on the dot with the word. We are here. We're at the end, friends. Soon it shall be time run out. Millions will lose their lives. Millions will be uh, now believe that they are saved. Will be counted fodder for the atomic age. We are living at the last hour. By the grace of Almighty God, by His help to His people, that they might look forward to the soon appearing of Christ. How long, Brother Branham? Maybe in 20 years. Maybe in 50 years. Maybe in 100 years. I don't know. And maybe in the morning. Maybe yet tonight. I don't know. And anybody says they do know, they're wrong. Amen. Amen. They don't know. God only knows. Amen. Now, notice, so help me, by God, I tell the truth that these are spiritually discerned to me. Amen. Discerned Amen. by the Holy Spirit. And by every one of them has identified its place in the Bible. Now, what this great secret is that lays beneath this seal, I do not know. I don't know it. I couldn't make it out. I couldn't tell it. Just what it, just what it said. But I know that it was them seven thunders uttering themselves right close together, just banging seven different times, and it unfolded into something else that I seen. Then when I seen that, I looked for the interpretation that flew across there, and I couldn't make it out. That's exactly right. The, the hour isn't quite yet far. Amen. But it's moving into that cycle. See? Right. It's coming up close. So the thing for you to do is to remember that I speak to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Be prepared, or you don't know what time something can happen. Amen. Now, when that gets on tape, which it is, that'll probably send 10,000 of my friends away from me. Because we're going to say that Brother Bram's trying to put himself and make himself a, a servant or a prophet or something before God. Let me tell you, my brethren, that is an error. Amen. I'm only telling you what I've seen and what has been told to me, and now you you do whatever you want to. Amen. I don't know who's going to, what's going to take place. I do not know. I just know that those seven thunders holds that mystery of heavens was quiet. Amen. Everybody understand? Amen. Amen. It may be time. It may be the hour now. That this great person that we're expecting to rise on the scene may rise on the scene. Maybe this ministry that I have tried to take people back to the word has laid a foundation. And if it has, I'll be leaving you for good. There won't be two of us here at the same time. If it is, he'll increase, I'll decrease. I don't know. But I have been privileged by God to look and see what it was. See? See, unfold to that much. Now, that is the truth. And I'm sure that you've noticed the things that's been happening this week. I'm sure you noticed that little Collins boy laying there dying the other night. That little leukemia girl. The kingdom of God is coming. And it's becoming more from the negative to the positive as it has been. Now, that ought to choke people from justification to sanctification to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then here, here. Amen. We're just drawing closer to God all the time. Amen. Can't you see Methodist ministers? How oh, that your message of sanctification was above that which Luther preached? You Pentecostals, can't you see your message of the baptism is beyond that which Methodists preached? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we've had a lot of things go forth, and that's right. And if there's anybody that despises uh, 
wrong and people saying something that's actually lies and not the truth, I hate that. But I, I do love the solid truth, no matter how much it interrupts this way or that way. If it's truth, God will find a short it's truth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And if he doesn't do that one of these days soon, then my vision wasn't right. Now, you see where I slay myself. When will it be, Brother Bram? I cannot tell you. I do not know. But one of these days, if we never meet again on this earth, we're going to meet down here at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. And you'll find out that in that room, the revelation coming from God, just like all the rest of them has, at the, one of the mystery of that seal, the reason it wasn't revealed, it was seven thunders and other voices. And there it is perfectly because nothing knows anything about it. It wasn't even written. So we're at the end time. We are here. I thank God for his word. I thank him for Jesus Christ. For without sending him for the, uh, the propitiation of our sins, we'd all be in a big muck of sin with no hope. But by his grace, his, his blood cleanses all sin. It's like the drop of ink in a bucket of Clorox. You never find the ink again. When our sins are confessed, it's put in the blood of Jesus Christ, they'll never be known again. God forgets them. They ever was they've been done. And as long as that sacrifice is laying there in an atonement for us, and that's all, that's it. See? We, we're not sinners no more. We're Christians by the grace of God. And remember, in our own selves, we'd probably be just as bad as we ever was. But see, the grace of God has appeared to us. And that's what's made us what we are today, Christian brothers and sisters. This has been a tremendous week for me. I'm tired. My mind is tired. Because I, I have, was the best that I could do. And something strange going on every day. I would be amazed to walk in the room and be there for a few minutes. And see something just turn me completely around. And here I go in there pick up the notes. I pick up books of Dr. Smith, Euro Smith, and all, all the writers and everything, and read, in, and read down in their books. I say, now here's the sixth seal. Here's the fourth seal. Now, what does this man say? He'd say, well, it was this, that, or that. I look over here and get another man. He said it was such and such. And it looked like it just, it just didn't work right. And I thought, well, what is it, Lord? I walk up and down the floor a while. I kneel down and pray. Go back and pick up the Bible. Sit down and read. Walk back and forth. And then all of a sudden, when I got quiet, here it just unfolded like that. Then I grab a pen right quick, and go to writing it down like that, whatever I was seeing and doing, watch it like that to got it rolled down. Then I take the rest of the day, and go down and chase this out and see if it tied all the way down through the scriptures. Then it prove all things. Okay? I got this year, and I think now, there's many people had visions, there's many been revelations. If it's contrary to the word, leave it alone. That's right, leave it alone. Now, now, then I run this down like this. Run it down like this. I jot down little things here. I thought, well, uh, the class will be glad to hear this because it ties here and ties here. Now, let's see. What does this say here? Yes. It, yeah, here it is right here. See, bring it back through the Bible and tie the thing down through the week. There it is on tapes. You're welcome to them. And I have did it to the best of my knowledge under Christian fellowship, Amen. grace of God to all man by Jesus Christ. I've done the very best that I know how. You've been one of the finest classes. There's been nobody could have said any nicer. You all have come in here at 1 o'clock in the day, up till 5 o'clock to whenever they opened the church and brought the, and let the people come in. You stood in the cold. You sat in the snow. You've done everything. Stood around the walls. Your legs ache. I'd see the man sit down, let the women sit up in different ones and stand like that sitting around. I thought, Lord, oh, it has been a mysterious week. The whole thing's been kind of strange. How would people come? See them stand around the outside, in the windows, in the doors, back around the back, everywhere, <laughs> listening. And as far as the speaker, I'm far from a speaker. I, I got that much intelligence to know that I'm not. But I'm not a speaker. But well, why would people sit and listen like that? Why would they do it? They don't come to hear a person like me. But they're coming because there's something in it drawing a people. Amen. See? There's something in it that's drawing them. As my wife stood here at the platform and sang when I started, they come from the east and west. They come from the land afar. 
to feast with the king, to dine as his guest. How blessed these pilgrims are, Amen. beholding his hallowed face, aglow with light divine, blessed partakers of his grace as gems in his crown to shine. Amen. May you always bear that in mind, to be a gem in the crown of Jesus Christ. Paul said to the church, you are, you are the jewels, the gems of his crown. We want to be the gems of the crown of Jesus Christ. We don't want to never put a man in it. You forget anything about me. I am your brother, a sinner saved by grace, not fit to live. That's exactly the truth. I stand that to be humble. That's facts. There's nothing in me, not one sound thing at all. But the grace of God has let my poor dimming eyes look beyond the curtain of time Amen. and see those things on her. And I come back. When I was a little boy, I loved people. I always wanted somebody to love me and talk to me. Nobody would do it because of the name of the family. Nobody talked to me. But when I made my surrender to God, then our people background being Irish, I thought maybe there's all Catholic. Maybe that would be it. I went there. He is some way. And I went out to First Baptist Church. And he is another way. I said, Lord, there's got to be some way it's true. And something said, it's a word. Amen. I've helped that word look at every vision, every word. The day I laid that cornerstone down there, and I put that in there, I wrote on there what he showed me that morning in a vision. Be instant, in season, out of season, rebuke with all long suffering doctrine, for the time will come and they'll not endure sound doctrine, but at their own lust shall heap for themselves together as teachers having itching ears, and be turned away from the truth and the fables. And I've seen those two trees that have stood by do that very same thing. That's right. There we are. And that is true. And now, you won't remember. Let me exhort you again. Don't say thank you to anybody at all. Don't say, think of some minister or something, some mortal man. There's anything good about him because there's not. I don't care who he is. Amen. There's nothing right. good to any man. That's right. If there's a whole bunch of trumpets laying here and one of them had to sound out a certain music, it's the man damn trumpets are perfectly mute. It's the fellow that can sound the trumpet that knows what he's going to do that picks up the trumpet. The trumpet has nothing to do with it. The sound comes from an intelligence behind it. Amen. Amen. That's right. So all trumpets are the same. All men are the same. Right. All Christians are the same. Right. There's no great man among us. We're not great men, not great women. We're all brothers and sisters. Amen. All the same. Amen. The same way. We're no great. One don't make one greater than the other. Not a thing at all to do. No, sir. But we're just all human beings. Don't try to interpret the things. Don't try to do anything more than just live a close life, giving praise and honor to Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody understand that now? Amen. And then love him with all your heart. Do you do it? Everybody thoroughly understand? Amen. Does everybody believe? Amen. Remember when I first started? Who has believed our report? Yes. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Amen. As He revealed to you Amen. His mercy, His goodness. Amen. Amen. Just remember, love Him with all your heart. I'm going back home now. I'll be back here again, the Lord willing, around the 1st of June. Maybe if the Lord puts it up on my heart, maybe sometime this early summer, like June or somewhere, maybe early fall, if the Lord tarries, I would like to come back and set another seven nights for the uh, seven last trumpets. Would you like that? Would you, yeah. would you pray for me that God will help me? All right. Until I meet you again, remember this good old song. I love you. I
want you to bow your head. I want to pray for you. Before the pastor dismisses, I want to pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, may the people, Lord, understand, which I'm sure that there's some that doesn't, but Father, may they, they know the objective and may they understand, Father, that, that it's your grace to them that these things are revealed. And I want to thank you, Lord, for the knowledge of knowing these things that thou has revealed to us. And I pray for everyone that's here, everyone that's attended the meetings, that there be some who does not believe. May, Lord, they become believers. I pray for all that will hear the messages by tape. And if it falls, which it will, no doubt, in the homes and places of many unbelievers, that will differ. But, Father, I pray for each one that before they say any blasphemous word, that they might first sit down and search the Scriptures by what's been said. And then say to you that they truly are sincere and want to know whether this is truth or not. And I pray for them, Father. And I pray for these who stood along these walls, who stood on the outside, who sat in their cars, for little children, and for all that's been in, just all of them, Lord, I pray for them. And if I pray that my prayers will be answered, that you will bless them. First, Lord, give everyone eternal life. I pray that there will not be one of them lost, not one. And now, Father, we don't know when this great event will be, but when we see these signs appearing and scriptural happenings, it warns our heart above measure. And I pray, Father God, that you'll help us I pray that you'll help our dear pastor, Brother Neville, make him large, full of grace and full of power, and with understanding that he might take this stored food and feed the lambs of God. Lord, I pray that you'll keep sickness away from us. May it come to pass that when people become sick, That they'll remember the present and all-sufficient blood of the Lord Jesus lays on the altar to make an atonement. And I pray that they'll be healed immediately. And I pray that you'll keep the power of Satan away from them to discourage them or to try to make them make cults or just keep all the powers of the enemy away, Lord. Sanctify us to thy word. Grant it, Lord. And then, Lord, I pray that you'll help me. I'm beginning to fade away, Lord. I know my days can't be too many more. And I pray that you'll help me. Let me be true, Lord, and honest and sincere. That I might be able to bear the message as far as it's ordained for me to bear. And when it comes to the time that I must lay down, and I get out to the river, and the waves begin to come in oh God may I be able to hand this old sword over to somebody else that will be honest with it Lord and will pack the truth grant it Lord until then help me to be strong and healthy and courageous help my church bless us together Lord we are yours we feel now that your spirit is among us we believe that you will answer our prayers. While we commit ourselves to you with thy word for our service for the rest of our days upon this earth. In the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our beloved Savior, for his glory. Amen. 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 Uh, God bless you.
You have just finished hearing the original Seventh Seal as it was preached in its entirety on Sunday evening, March 24, 1963, at the Branham Tabernacle in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Brother Branham did not want this original recording released. The next day, Monday, March 25, 1963, Brother Branham went to the motel room of Brother Fred Sothman and Brother James McGuire, who were at that time in charge of making the tapes. Brother Branham told these brothers, I don't want this message sent out the way it is. After listening to the tape himself, he instructed the brothers to stop the tape at a certain point, and, at that point, recorded a new portion of approximately twenty minutes in length. This new portion was then used in place of the original ending. This recording was the only released version of the Seventh Seal until 1966. After Brother Branham left the scene, the board of the William Branham Evangelistic Association unanimously agreed to release the tape originally recorded at the Tabernacle. Since that time, both versions have been available. We have now placed this additional message of Brother Branham on one tape with the original seventh seal. The next voice you hear will be Brother Branham in the motel room on Monday, March 25, 1963 be a good thing that he doesn't know anything about it, because if he did, then he would impersonate that. That's his tricks in doing things. So therefore, God has made it so hid to the whole world, even to heaven, that there is no way of understanding it, only as God will reveal it himself. Now I want you to notice uh, tonight that in the sixth seal, there was a, a threefold purpose of the sixth seal. There was a threefold purpose of the horse riders. There's been a threefold purpose and all these things. That brings us back to a three and a seven again. See? Seven seals, seven uh, uh, vials, and so forth. Now, in threes and sevens is God's number in his mathematics of revealing his word. Now, you notice like in the, the, the riders, uh, there was uh, three horses went out. One of them was a white one. One was a red one. One was a black one. And then in the fourth horse, why, all of them is mixed together. See, a threefold purpose. Now, God did the same thing. God did the same when he sent out his uh, line, which was his word, to combat the Antichrist. Amen. Then we find out that he sent out the ox during the time of the, uh, the tribulation period, the sacrificial animal. And in this tribulation period, that's all the people could do. It just work, slave, and offer themselves for a sacrifice. Then we find out in the next age, which was the reformer's age, God sent out the wisdom of a man, a man-like head on the beast, which was a power that went forth into reformers. Now, did you notice? Every, no wonder that the people of these days uh, still live in the hangover like it was from the reformer's age because they just see it in an ecclesiastical way of looking at it, and they see it in the way that the seminaries just taught it. That was God's way at one time. But we've lived to pass that. Now we're into the age of the eagle, the revelation to be revealed, the whole thing. Now I'll compare this with Revelations, the 10th chapter, verse 1 to 7. And we'll see here in this Revelation, uh, the Revelation here, 10, 1 to 7, that in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel's message was to finish up all the mysteries of God. Now we find out also, in this, that the sixth uh, seal now being opened, it was for a threefold purpose. Now, here was the purposes. The first thing was that the sleeping virgin had to go through the tribulation period for purification. She had to be purged of her sins of unbelief and rejecting the message. This she was done in the tribulation period. We see the wind up over here in Revelation 7, between the 6th and 7th uh, chapter here, that she had been purged, and she had been given her robes. Now, she's not the bride, but it's a church. The pure people that 
uh, uh, didn't have the opportunity maybe to receive the message or in some way that they were blinded by these false prophets and they, they didn't get a chance and yet they're really sincere in heart and God knows their heart Amen. and here they're purged during this time. You notice that another purging kind. That's for Israel. When she gathers, that's the second fold. God purges Israel in the tribulation period out of the millions that will gather there. There will be a selected 144,000. And they will be purged uh, also. God's purging Israel. Notice, there is a whole earth is to be purged. There will be such a thing that the moon, stars, and all nature will be purged. You see what it is? The earth is renewing herself, being purged, getting ready for the millennium. The millennium's coming up. And see, everything that's got any filth in it is to be purged during the sixth seal. Now, now do you notice on the opening of this seventh seal, it's also in a threefold mystery. This one I will speak and have spoke, that it is the mystery of the seven thunders. The seven thunders in heaven will unfold this mystery. It'll be right at the coming of Christ because Christ said no one knew when he would return. Did you notice when the Jews asked him that? No one we compared the scripture here with Matthew 24 with the six seals. The seventh seal was left out because, you see, Christ said only God himself, no, not even the angels, no wonder it wasn't even written. You see, the hush, nothing take takes place then. Angels don't know it. Nobody knows when he's coming. But there'll be, a, there'll be a, a seven voices of these thunders that will reveal the great revelation at that time. So I believe to us who, if we don't know it, and we, if we, we won't be known till that time, but it will be revealed in that day, in the hour that is supposed to be revealed in. So the thing for us to do is to be reverent before God and serve Him and do all that we know how to do and live good Christian lives. Here, now we find that the sixth uh, seal has been opened to us. We see it and we know that this seventh seal cannot be broke to the public until that hour arrives. Now, there was some reason that God let this uh, seven voices be thundered because it must come. See, for the we find that Christ the Lamb took the, the book in his hand and he opened that seven seal. But you see, it's a hidden mystery. No one knows it. But it, it right along with what he said, no one would know he's coming. They also would not know about this uh, seven uh, thunder mystery. So you see, it's connected together that much. We have an understanding of it today because the rest of it is all unfolded. But this is not unfolded. But sitting in my room, and I heard this, or not heard it, rather, but seen it unfold to this seven thunders. Now, that's as far as we can go right there. And now I trust that each and every one of you will serve God and do that which is right and Love Him all your life and serve Him and God will take care of the rest. Now, we have in the completion here now, by the grace of God, all the mysteries of the six seals that's been sealed up and we understand and know here that the seventh seal is not to be known to the public. Now, His coming and the hour of His coming when the destruction of the earth, you know, you said there, what will be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? In Matthew 24, there were they asked him that question. He went down to that. He told about Israel being gathered as a nation in the 31st verse of Matthew 24, 31. But then he started off on parables. See? Then you see there, learn a parable of the fig tree. When you see it putting forth its buds, why, you know, springs now. And then when you see this, uh, coming to pass, then though the time is now. See, Israel gathering in its own homeland. But you notice he omitted the revelation of this seventh seal. And here when the seventh seal, when he opened it, he also omitted it again. See? 
So we see that it is a complete mystery. Therefore, the hour is not yet for this mystery to be known. Therefore, we're this far, and the rest of it will be known right around about the time that Jesus appears on earth again for his bride or whatever takes place at that time. Now, until that time, let's just all pray, live good, straight Christian lives, looking forward for his coming. And now if this tape would happen to fall into the hands of some persons, somewhere, don't try to uh, make any kind of an ism out of it. The only thing you do, you just continue serving God. Because this great secret is so great that God wouldn't even let John write it. It thundered out, but he, knowing that promiseness that it would be open, but to this time it isn't open. And now... We are grateful to God for what He has showed us. I've been sitting in the room up there for eight days, and the message that I have just got through explaining to you, many of you here will understand, and I promise that there was something going on spiritual all the time that I was sure you were missing it, and here's what it is. It's the absolute vindication of this interpretation of the scriptures being sent of God because before we even went into it and I left to go west the Lord showed me a vision one day about 10 o'clock one morning and I come and explain it I hear that I'd seen it didn't know what it was it was a constellation of seven angels we remember that you'll get it on the tape called what time is it sir well now that is exactly what you're seeing now. The seven angels, I was in the West. You remember the little bitty messengers? They went East. The second messengers, the doves, a little bit larger bird, they went East. And then I looked, they was with me all the time. That is that first and second pull. Now, the third came from the West, sweeping forward with great terrific speed. And they picked me up. That was coming back east with the mystery of these seven seals, just like it said in, in Junior Jackson's uh, dream that the Lord let me interpret for him there. On the inside of that pyramid, there was white stone that wasn't written on. That's the reason I had to go west to connect with these angels' message to come back here to reveal it to the church. Remember I said the next things that happen to be here at the church? That's just exactly. Another thing, I want you to notice what's taking place. And if you're listening to the tape of the, what time is it, sir? You will notice that one angel was very notable to me. The rest of them just was, seemed ordinarily. But this angel was a noted angel. He was to my left in the consolation in the form of a pyramid. And you remember, it was in the pyramid where the mysterious white rock was not written on. And the angels took me into that pyramid of themselves. The mysteries of God known only to them. And now they was the messengers that had come to interpret that pyramid, or that uh, message of the secret of these seven seals which lays with the inside the pyramid. Now, the angel was to my left would really be the last or seventh angel if we would count them from left to right because he is on my left, me looking to him towards the west. Him coming towards the east would be on the left side. So that would be the last angel's message. Very notable. Remember how I said he had his, kind of his head back and his great sharp wings and how he flew right to me? Now, that is the seventh seal. It still is a notable thing. And we, are, we don't know what it is as yet because it's not permitted to be broken. But now, each one of you in the meeting has noticed that what a meeting it's been. Everybody just seemed to be at, uh, right on the end of their seat. And everybody... Uh, standing around here at 1 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon, waiting for the doors to open and get up here in the front, standing around the walls, cramped limbs and everything. What is it? It's been 
the Holy Spirit sending down these messengers, and they have been revealing it to us. And then notice how it's dovetailed with the Word exactly. And then to let you all know that this is truth, he foretold it about him about two months now or more before it ever happened that when I went west not knowing it, come back here with the interpretation as he has given it. I remember in the vision, he never told me one thing in the vision when he took me up. I was scared, afraid I was going to die, be killed in an explosion. You see, they could not do it. The interpretation come just as I had need of it. That was in the room. And I gave it out just as he gave it. Now, you see, friends, visions doesn't fail. They're always perfect. They're just exactly true. Now, the vision plus the word plus the history plus the church ages and all blend together. So I could truly say that to the best of my understanding and according to the word of God and the vision and the revelation, the interpretation thereof is thus saith the Lord. Now, may the Lord bless you all, each one, real richly as we stand now and sing uh, this good old song of the church. God bless you, each one. Amen. Amen.